All right, let's see what we have in here, everybody. Well, look at there. Welcome. So glad you could join us this evening. This is a little bit different Advent experience. It's a wonderful life, which is a message we all need to hear and remember and hold in our heart this Advent. So Frank Capra's movie, set in 1945, at the end of a long depression and a cruel war, is a work that explores the timeless themes of love and loss, mercy and compassion, service and sacrifice, endurance and faith, friendship and forgiveness. We're at the end of a very contentious election season, my friends, and not yet at the end of a long shutdown due to the pandemic. Perhaps it's time to revisit this classic tale. As you move with me around the sanctuary, we'll go to several stations that have readings for reflection and prayers to pray or activities to do. And I invite you to stop this video and um, gather the materials you need to participate in this prayer walk or just sit back and relax and listen. Our first station is uh, another scene from the movie when George Bailey graduates high school. He has big plans to go to college, become an architect and travel the world. Here he is at the dry goods store to buy a suitcase. He will never have a use for it because shortly after this, his father dies of a heart attack and he has to stay home and run the family business. At this point in the movie, George's guardian angel Clarence, who is watching this scene from heaven, notes that he likes this face. He likes George Bailey. So pick up a mirror you have at home have a good look at yourself. What hopes, dreams, or plans do you read there? As you begin this sanctuary tour, consider where you have been since you graduated from high school or preschool or <laughs> middle school. Reflect on where you are headed now. George Bailey says in one of the most memorable speeches in, I think, movie history to a collection of bankers that want to close down his dad's business. He says, just a minute, just a minute. Now, hold on, Mr. Potter. You're right when you say my father was no businessman. I know that. Why he ever started this cheap penny any building and loan, I'll never know. But neither you nor anyone else can say anything against his character. Because his whole life was, why, in the 25 years since he and his brother Uncle Billy started this thing, he never once thought of himself. Isn't that right, Uncle Billy? He didn't save enough money to send Harry away to college, let alone me but he did help a few people get out of your slums, Mr. Potter. And what's wrong with that? Why, here, you're all businessmen here. Doesn't it make them better citizens? Doesn't it make them better customers? You, you said, what'd you say a minute ago? They had to wait and save their money before they even ought to think of a decent home. Wait, wait for what? Until their children grow up and leave them? until they're so old and broken down that they... Do you know how long it takes a working man to save $5,000? Just remember this, Mr. Potter, that this rabble you're talking about, they do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. Well, is it 
too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? Anyway, my father didn't think so. People were human beings to him, but to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. Well, in my book, my father died a much richer man than you'll ever be. George's father, Peter Bailey, built up his business by providing housing for the working poor. Even in the midst of the Great Depression, he kept hope alive for a lot of struggling people. So here's George defending his father to the board of directors at the savings and loan after his father's sudden death. Mr. Potter, who controls everything in town but, but the savings and loan, is arguing to close it down. In this scene, Jimmy Stewart goes full on, Mr. Smith goes to Washington. What hopeless cause? have you championed in your life? Scrounge up a candle and light it to keep your hope alive. Here are some thoughts for meditation. From Jeremiah 20. For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, plans to give you a future full of hope. And William Sloan Coffin. Hope is a state of mind independent of the state of the world. And from Joan Chittister. Hope sends us dancing around the dark corners, trusting in a tomorrow we cannot see. And from Dorothy Day, no one has a right to sit down and feel hopeless. There's too much work to do. And from Jesse Jackson, where there is hope, there is life. Where there is life, there is possibility. And where there is possibility, change can occur. And finally, from Romans 15, may the God of hope fill you with all joy so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. After the death of George's father, things go south at the building and loan. When the bank examiner arrives, George flees. In his drunken desperation, he hurls himself off of a bridge into icy water. But he is saved by his guardian angel Clarence, AS2, angel second class, who is trying to earn his wings. Clarence hopes that he can convince George Bailey to give up thoughts of suicide by showing him what the world would be like if he had never been born. In his absence, George's childhood, George's hometown Bedford Falls becomes Pottersville. One of George's childhood friends becomes a prostitute. His old boss, the druggist, is sent to prison. His brother dies in an accident. Soldiers are killed in the war. His friends don't recognize him. His mother sends him away. His wife is an old maid librarian. Finally, George gets the message. Clarence tells him, you see, George, you really have had a wonderful life. Don't you see what a mistake it would be just to throw it away? Make a list of the people you love. Imagine what their lives would be like without you. Say a prayer for each one of them and tuck that list away.
George's little brother, Harry, didn't die in the freezing lake when he was a boy because George was there to save him. He later went to war and saved the lives of many others and came home a hero. But he toasted his big brother who had made so many sacrifices for him. To my big brother George, the richest man in town. Call to mind the gifts you have and the people you've known and answer these questions. Who wouldn't have had a friend in school without you? Who wouldn't have gotten a helping hand? Who wouldn't have been taught, inspired, loved, or forgiven? What poetry would not have been written? What songs would not have been sung? What beauty would not have been created or appreciated if you hadn't come along? Teresa of Avila says, Christ has no body on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ's compassion is to look out to the world. Yours are the feet with which Christ is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which Christ is to bless all people now. And Isaiah says, But now thus says the Lord, the one who created you, O Jacob, the one who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. George Bailey reclaims his life. It's quite a celebration. And he runs through the streets of Bedford Falls. And he sees Mr. Potter in his bank office through the window. And he screams out, Merry Christmas, Mr. Potter. Mr. Potter, knowing the bank examiner is waiting for him back home, says, and Happy New Year to you in jail. Why don't you go on home? They're waiting for you. After George Bailey experiences what the world would be like without him, he prays to live again and wants to go home. When his prayer is answered, he is so grateful to be alive that he even shouts Christmas greetings to his arch enemy, Mr. Potter. In the midst of this awful pandemic, with all the chaos swirling around, with all the stress pressing down, are you still grateful to be alive? What would it be like to be so full of the joy of living that you could send heartfelt Christmas greetings to your very worst enemy? If you have a Christmas card at home, pick it up and write a greeting to a person or a problem that has been threatening to suck all the joy out of your life. You might even write a card to the coronavirus. What do you want it to say? Take the card with you, giving thanks that no amount of hurt or hate can diminish the love that God has for you and the life that God wants for you.
this is my favorite scene of the movie. <laughs> Farron says, remember, George, no man is a failure who has friends. While George has been reported missing and the family sends out the alarm, the community rallies around. When they hear that George is in trouble and needs money, everyone in town who has ever been touched by George's life donates what they can. The saloon owner, Martini, empties out the jukebox, and they all gather at the Bailey house. George's friends are about to teach him what success in life really means. Find some ribbons or strips of fabric to represent the people who are most dear to you and the people who come, you come into contact with on a daily basis, your neighbors, your co-workers, store clerks, street people, braid or tie those ribbons together. And as you do, give thanks for all the ways that your lives are intertwined and pray for each of the people in your life and for God's continued blessing on those relationships. Zuzu's had a cold, but she gets up when her dad comes home. And she says, look, Daddy, teacher says, every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Her dad says, that's right. That's right. Attaboy, Clarence. Who are the angels in your life? Who are the people who have saved you from physical or spiritual danger? Who kept you from choosing the wrong path? And who made you want to live again? Tie some yarn on a bell here, hang it on a tree, and ring it for them. And then say this prayer with me. God of heaven and earth, I give you thanks for all the angels in my life, the ones with me and the ones who have gone before me, the parent who birthed me, the teacher who taught me, the leader who inspired me, and the friend who rescued me. Make all these graces of my past real to me in my present. Make all of the trials of yesterday a new source of strength for the tasks of tomorrow. I remember the past with gratitude so that I can embrace the future with hope. In the name of the hope of the world, I pray. Amen. all go through hard times. We've all had some pretty awful experiences. And this has been an extra hard year for everybody. So it's important to stop and remember that God has given us a really wonderful life. Think about all the things you are grateful for. And for each Thanksgiving, add a button to the jar of thanks.
<laughs> God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Merry Christmas.